Hey, JC here, JC's Comics and More, your pop culture superstore. That's 6725 West Central Avenue, Toledo, Ohio, 4361741953160097. Got these comics that we're still going through and processing. This is going to be on Maze of Adventures, which is primarily Inhumans Black Widow, but also the Gray Black Beast was in there when Hank underwent his. Uh, his uh, transformation. So this is issue number two. This was written by Kirby and illustrated by Kirby as well with uh, Chick Stone. So that was certainly some of Jack's first uh, work writing. You got the thing here. He's uh, in his room. Um, he's trying to open the door. It won't turn. So, oh my God, it must be. I'll show him. You know, you must be a Lulu. You can't be human. By golly, he is an inhuman. You know, look at that door. Uh, some crazy stuff here by Jack. This actually is pretty good by, by Jack. If you didn't know any better, you might uh, swear that uh, this was written by Stan. Um, there you got Spider-Man 88, The Return of Doc Doc. The post plus the most dramatic flight of of uh, any giant 747 took. This one a solid dynamite all the way through. Boom goes the dynamite. Wish I could reorder those, uh, those posters there. But that note i thought that might be lou Ferrigno, but it's not you've got uh, the black widow with red and uh, uh written by gary uh, frederick and uh, john basama big john basama doing the artwork now the mandarin was supposed to be in the next issue of course i've got issue five i don't have issue three so it's very possible the mandarin was in that next issue but you've got this great john basama artwork with the widow classic widow there you can buy any 12 hit records for $3.98. Sign of the Times. Sell Grit. It's uh, here talking about Jack leaving. Who says lightning never strikes twice. Remember a few years back when Steve Disco silently left the hollowed hollows of Marvel. Secrets for Fortune is also aware the time of this writing, early in March, Jack Kirby has unexpectedly announced his resignation from our surprise but st uh, stellar little staff. They things they say things usually happen in threes, so I figure a few years hence we'll be uh, receiving a uh, a notice of uh, from Iron Forbush. But uh, yep, when uh, you know Jack leaving, you know they uh, put that in there, let you know that Jack was leaving, um, pushing the Conan comic. But issue number five here. It's a great John Basama cover. And you've got Neil Adams and Roy Thomas taking over. Neil Adams doing the Inhumans. He was born to do the Inhumans. Look at that. As great as Jack is, look at Neil Adams' Black Bolt. As Medusa. Black Bolt uh, has amnesia. Don't speak, man. Don't talk. And here you got uh, Gene Colan doing the Black Widow. There she is. Getting ready. They're ringing, of course. Ivan. Ivan is calling her, so she has to get ready and put her, put her outfit on. Great Gene Colan artwork. His copies aren't in the best of shape. You're talking about King Call. That's a Bernie Wrightson artwork there. The late, great Bernie Wrightson. Uh, no names to be uh, uh, in here at all that, that jump out. That previous issue had water damage on it. You've got issue number six. This is a Neil Adams cover. And of course, Neil doing the artwork on the inside as well with Roy Thomas. Here's Black Bolt speaking, just speaking, just barely speaking, and destroys, uh, destroys this this giant, uh, you know, the ship, sinks it, destroys it in the bay. Maximus is doing his thing, which is always not good. Uh, again, looking in the back, we're not really seeing seeing much here. We've got Don Heck, Don Heck doing uh, the Black Widow now.
Let's see what it says here. Uh, Spidey 96. Spidey in the drug scene. A new chance for Peter. Mary Jane makes it. And to top it off, here comes the Green Goblin. Merely Marvelton at his greatest. Merely Marvelton's greatest. And that stationery. We'd like to have that stationery. Here we got a John Bassama cover. John did not do the artwork on the inside. Got uh, Gary Conway. Looks like the first time that these guys have teamed up. And Mike uh, was Sikowski. Uh, who worked for DC, did the Inferior 5, he did some other stuff. He did the Justice League for a while for the for DC. So he's got coming over to Marvel and uh, putting his unique style at Marvel. You've got, look, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's got himself, uh, he's, he's got himself a nice helper. Got Magneto. Magneto looks uh, much, much different. Although some of these panels look like maybe John Romita uh, may have, uh, you know, went in a little bit and touched them up. Possible, very possible. Get your own Polaris nuclear sub. This is a full length inhuman story. Got the Marvel checklist, uh, Spider-Man 102, Vampire called Morbius is at large in the city. If that is enough for you, Spidey, so ally is none other than the Lizard. Uh, this here talks about the price going up uh, from 36 to 52 pages and 15 to 25 cents. They used to always, uh, if the price went up, they would apologize and they'd, you know, you know, tell you what the reason was. Uh, here we go. We got Gil Kane doing this cover on the number 10. And again, the same writer and art team. Again, this is um, has a backup story reprinting the Stanley and Jack Kirby origin of the Inhumans. Lots of nice big splash pages. Uh, Magneto gets smacked by Black Bolt. He's had enough of his crap. Let's see who who may have looked the Inhumans. Let's see the letters page. You got uh, Spider-Man 104, Craven, and you got somebody writing uh, Henry Walker. These these uh, Stanley soap boxes and the bullpen pallet pages were, were were great. And it seems like there are certainly lots of servicemen and women that uh, wrote in to. A Marvel back then. Here we've got issue 13 with the Beast. Unfortunately, we do not have uh, his first uh, first appearance. But we got a John Romita cover. We got Tom Sutton artwork, Steve Englehart. This is a water damage cover, so unfortunately, this is not going to be a uh, very expensive. Beast is pretty powerful and looks much different than he does now. Uh, Again, like I said, we've got some service people writing in. There's his, his blonde girlfriend, Linda. And you've got uh, early appearance by Captain Baxter. And there's Pat, Pat Baxter, a.k.a. Pat Walker, a.k.a. Hellcat. Got a Gil Kane cover. Got Quasimodo. Again, you got Englehart and Sutton. High Flying Angels, next issue. And again, nothing as far as anybody that just jumps out there. I didn't mean to be angry, but I can't, so I won't. There, his uh, the disguise that he wore wasn't perfect, and he's disappointed because he had a hot date, and unfortunately, uh, nobody's gonna wake up happy that morning. Uh, we've got Jim Starlin cover and Joe Sinnott. Jim Starlin and Joe Sinnott, uh, the coming of the Griffin. He shows up. He's wounded. Shows up at Patsy Walker's uh, apartment. Kind of reach tells his his origin, how he got to be. 
when he got to that point. Uh, and now he wakes up. He is he is now uh, the black beast, not the not the the gray beast. And it could be maybe the coloring that they that they tried. Uh, it was hard to color the book. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> It's hard to color the book at that point, much like when the Hulk initially was gray. And they changed him to green. You got the Griffin. Um, he was a pretty powerful character to begin with. Angel shows up, sees uh, two monsters battling each other. Both of them are strangers. He can't get involved until he figures out which one's the bad guy. He'd feel pretty stupid if he helped a dangerous menace get, get away. He wishes Hank was here. Hank's thinking, why doesn't Warren help me? Then he, uh, uh, He's, he smashes them, so Angel goes to save the Griffin, and there he gets, you know, pop right in the, in the kisser for his troubles. Yeah, Spidey 114. Spidey's got, you know, his ulcer and the whole Aunt May, and there you got the cat's first appearance. And Hank's, uh, somebody, somebody shows up from his past. He's got a book, and the next issue is The Juggernaut. Unfortunately, I do not have the next issue. So, next issue for is issue 17. Again, look at that red. That nice red and that nice yellow. And another uh, Starlin cover. Starlin did the uh, did the, the, the pages surrounding this because this is a reprint. Unfortunately, the dreaded Deadline Doom caught up with Marvel. So, this reprints the Beast's origin. So, in case you weren't sure what happened that his mom and dad got together and they had a baby and the dad's uh, got uh, radioactivity in him and uh, the baby uh, you know was a result of that look pops that pops that uncle right in the face he becomes a uh, becomes a football player he's got bad guys involved look at this here spoof this uh, Marvel tried various humor magazines, much like Mad, and uh, this certainly is one of them. We got a few copies of that. And this was the last issue with the Beast in it. He then shows up in the Avengers next. But the next issue uh, has Kill Raven. And he's wearing Sean Connery's outfit from that uh, that movie. I can't recall what that movie is, uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, based on uh, concepts from H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds. And this is uh, Neil Adams did this first issue. I think Neil Adams and Howard Chaykin. You can certainly see Neil's creatures. And you can certainly tell that that was designed either by Neil or by Howard Chaykin. There we go. Gary Conway, Neil and Howard Chaykin. Conceived by Roy Thomas. Roy talks about the getting uh, War of the Worlds ongoing. There's an ad for Foom. All the rest I have are all amazing adventures with, with uh, with Kill Raven. Uh, get this cover here. Not sure exactly who did this cover. Uh, kind of looks like John Buscema in some ways. Maybe it's the inker, uh, but they want you to curb your dog. Uh, Howard Chaykin took over as a full-blown artist, and this is much different from Howard's work today. This would be something, if you see Howard, certainly get him to sign like a copy of this. He would probably be blown away by people bringing him uh, stuff like this and not his current current comics. And again, Marvel will start putting a little blurb at the bottom there, promoting their comics. You have an outdoor career. Here we go. He lives, he strikes. Tales of the Zombie, Marvel uh, doing uh, these magazines to get away from the comics code and doing zombie books. War as hell, believe it. Read it today. You 
Another great red cover. This is a Herb Trump cover. Herb uh, always changed his uh, signature. He never really had a signature signature. Uh, TWA, Pan Am. Nice plug there for them. And you've got Herb Trump artwork on the inside. And with Frank Giacola. And now Marv Wolfman's writing it. Now let's see this past issue was written by, by Gary Conway. You got Marv Wolfman. I believe the next issue is written by yet another writer. It went through writers uh, left and right. There's some of these marvels as I'm going through. It's pretty interesting how it, they uh, played uh, revolving chairs with the with the writers. He's got his costume or his, his outfit. Uh, he's got some new uh, clothing. And look, there's the classic Kill Raven that uh, I think John Romita uh, was involved with, or might have been Herb himself. Doing prizes and lots of cash. You get a horror record. Dracula Lives. Uh, here it talks about the loss of Bill Everett. I've seen these in many, many of these comics as I'm going through. And again, as I talked about before, lots of servicemen wrote into Marvel back in the day, and they always brought, printed those letters, or printed as many as they could. So they certainly appreciated the, uh, the sacrifice that uh, the servicemen made. It almost looks like Ramita in that face there, but this is certainly Herb Tramp. And there you go, Don McGregor. So you had Gary Conway, Marv Wolfman, and Don McGregor. And I think McGregor then became the, the regular writer then. Herb's uh, women weren't quite as classic as, uh, like, say, John Basama, but but they still uh, were knockouts none the least. She's a, a nabbered by, by Kill Raven. And look at this picture here. The top of the, the top of the Capitol. That might be right there. There's our problem. We solved it. We know what the problem in, in DC is now. Giant crab monsters. Some gorilla mutated monster thing. At issue number 22, and then, uh, like I said, Herb Trump. Look at that, that dude there. Slaves of the Human Squid. Again, McGregor, you got Herb. Looks like that's the Washington Monument. Roy Thomas, editor. And some crazy, crazy monster. Looks like a Godzilla fl uh, flick. Destroying that tugboat. And here you got some crazy uh, predecessor to uh, Lando from uh, Star Wars. There's a better picture in here that shows him. And yeah, look at those blue eyes. Watch your tongue, woman. Grr. You've become hard. Maybe that's the the way the Martians are really winning, making us lose the things that that were ours, like the chance to become soft. Olivia Skeleton prowls London, but so does Dracula. She's not Jarilla, but another green-skinned woman. You know this uh, preceded Gamora, and there you got the human uh, squid again. And then they started having backup stories in here that, for whatever reason, uh, they had like three-page backup stories of some some classic uh, horror and sci-fi stuff. I don't know why they... Well, this one... I think this one's five pages, but sometimes I think they're three pages. Uh, this has got the uh, the letters page in it. And again, nobody, but talks about the Savage Tales magazine with Conan. Again... Get uh, Herb Tramp, and this is a really bad name here. You know, strike my pets, strike and kill in the name of Ratak. 
So they they were at all winners. But bigger than Ben, wilder than Willard, and they're out for blood. Get great Herb Trepp artwork. Old Skull, every time you see him, he always refers to himself. Old Skull don't like this. Old Skull don't like this at all. Listen, Old Skull, listen to me. Old Skull ain't got no time. Masha, Masha, they got Mr. Killraven. Mr. Killraven came to save Hawk, and Old Skull, he surely did. Nobody going to stop Old Skull from doing the same for Mr. Killraven. Mashoa. I think he had been dropped on his head a few times. Namor versus the man called Force. Again, you got Lando right there. He's looking for uh, Han and Chewie. Looks like something out of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. There he is again. You couldn't do that, could you? Old Skull knew you, you, you could. Let me go grab my grab my phone. Again, as you can see, you got this, this backup story. Four pages. And then we got the letters page. You got the Marvel Marvel the Marvel stamp right there. Let me go grab my phone. Okay, we're back. Got another great red cover. This is the Buckler cover with uh, with Jansen. With Herb uh, still doing the art there. Got these flying bat creatures. You spell get these medallions. Those things are cool. Tapes. Tapes. Got some tapes. There he is. Han, Chewie, quick, let's get to the Falcon. Oh. You can't do that to Mr. Craven. Old Skull, not going to let nobody do that to Mr. Kill Raven. Not why Old Skull's around. He talks about how, you know, everybody's going to get you know, splattered. And do we under, understand each other? Old Skull understands. Okay, we've got the Mandarin as the uh, Marvel value stamp for that issue. Look, a letter from Marv Wolfman. Dear Don, Herb, Frank, and Charlotte, the latest issue of War of the Worlds was simply incredible. It was the very best issue of War of the Worlds since Marv Wolfman's issue. Though to be truthful, I wish Marv was back in the book. Marv Wolfman. Dear Marv, you wish who was back in the book? Wolfman who? Oh, Marv Wolfman. Well, bite. Who's Marv Wolfman? So was that actually Marv Wolfman that wrote that? Was that something, the gag they put in there? We're not sure. I guess only Marv Wolfman could tell you for sure. You get this. Steve Ditko, the painting. They always have uh, plot twists with that. Ditko always could do the plot twists. And we've got a John Romita and Gil Kane. Actually, Gil Kane, John Romita inks. You can tell John's uh, work right there. And then Rich Buckler took over on the art. Again, you've got the backup story. There's the Marvel checklist for that issue. Ralph Macchio, who became a writer slash editor for Marvel. That's one of his letters. I saw his letters in many of these. Good Buckler artwork. Klaus Jansen was inking. Dave Hunt was the letterer. Linda Lesman was the colorist. Roy Thomas was the editor. You got issue number uh, 26 here. You got a Romita cover. Now you've got Gene Colan doing the artwork. So this kind of uh, went through uh, musical chairs with the artist. You got Doc Ock is the, uh, uh, is the Marvel stamp pushing giant size master of kung fu and giant size. Uh, Fantastic Four. The issue 27. It's a Jim Starlin cover. Probably very rarely has it been reprinted. Um, and now it's uh, P. Craig Russell, or just Craig Russell now, doing the artwork. And very different art style for the book at that time. 
we got man thing is the stamp for that issue and pushing the the uh, the giant size masterpieces the strangers and we got one more to go but let me grab my phone well actually I guess I won't uh, I got a little ring more than three times uh, but here you got P. Craig Russell doing the artwork and the origin of the girl called Volcana. Some strange creatures. Looks like his buddy's getting eaten there. And a uh, great ad for the origins of Marvel Comics. 13 years in the making. I had uh, cloth and paper covers. And then the Mighty Marvel calendar for 1975. I had uh, both of these. And I believe this is, is this the last issue? No, it's still, uh, I thought this might have been the last issue of uh, Amazing Adventures, but no. You get Arg, Arg replaced Spoof, and then you got here War of the Ratings. Something here that, uh, again, uh, it's too bad that the letters pages are no longer in the comics. But uh, that's it for these here. We'll be doing the Tarzan. We'll be doing uh, Creatures on the Loose and Coal. Uh, Tarzan and Korak and Weird Worlds as well. The Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff. But if you like this, subscribe. And if you subscribe, be sure to smash that bell for notifications. Thank you. I appreciate it.